Hi everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to another Wide Down Wednesday. <laughs> I think I caught Joel off guard. He kind of realized he was slumped over and he was like, oh wait, I gotta sit up. Straighten up, suck the gut in, you know. <laughs> you you forget that you're like you're actually doing this for real. When you're on camera, you have to change your whole attitude. <laughs> when you're off camera, she's like, <laughs> oh, stop it. No, I'm not. It's Sophie. I'm actually in a good, kind of a good mood. The allergies are getting to me again, but I'm in a good mood. I am. Uh, it's quite chilly. That's the only thing cold. I'm in a good mood about right now, I think. It's cold out. It's, look, look at us. And it's wine down Wednesday, so I can be in a good mood about that. Yes. Mm. Now, we're going to take a totally different perspective from her 10 last week. Remember the, the lunacy? I really I mean, liked it. I, I don't know why you say I can't rank things a, a 10. You can't give it a 10. It has to be 9.5. For no. nine seven five. No, it can be a ten. <sighs> and and I, I gave that uh, the Bernard's Sauvignon Blanc. I gave it a ten because that uh, knocked it out of the park for me. I love those kind of flavors. Well, now somebody else might not like it as much as I did. On so Thanksgiving I Day, I want you to rate it again in front of the family. You want you to rate it again in well, front of the family. Again, it depends on what we have with it. We had shrimp and we had some other things. That's completely different than a Thanksgiving. Dinner. I was going to say that before we started filming, we were talking about rating, and I was going to say. Mood, food, weather. Weather, yeah. Everything changes your perspective on yeah. wine. So tonight we are going to do the uh, sola, sola, sola venta mi. Sola venta mi, <laughs> which I don't know. I, we may have done this before. This I can't white. remember if we've had this one or not before. So you know what? It's been so long. It'll be like it's new to it's us. It's like new to us. So <laughs> so. You can go ahead and, you know, it's got the, the bottle of a Riesling. It does, and I'm not sure why the purpose of that is. I don't know. I, I have to do a little more research on that because I'm not quite sure. Which is And we're, we're, yes, we're breaking out our, our Halloween because it's only a couple weeks away. Less than two weeks away now. Yes, I'm uh, feeling uh, kind of wicked. <laughs> I'm going to have my sons to my house on thank, or, uh, thank Halloween. Yes. And all three of my sons are going to be there. So let's... Uh, Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Because that's, that's like a miracle. It is Getting a miracle. Getting all of them together in the same place at the same time. All night. three together. I'll put all kinds of pictures up. Don't worry. But So, Sole Ventami, you can kind of tell by the name, is a French wine. It's from Alsace, France. Mm -hmm. um, it's described as fruity and crisp. And it obviously is a blend. So, it's 40% Pinot Blanc, 35% Pinot Gris, and 25% Gewürztraminer. What do you think? Lemony buttery. Lemony, that's okay. That's normally not something that I little eat lemony get together. Well, I haven't eaten anything. Lemony buttery. You taste the citrusy lemony. I do. I'm not getting buttery, but I would definitely Creamy. smooth. I definitely get smooth. I don't get like a bite, even though it's lemony. Lemony. No, nope, no bite, but no. creamy. A little creamy. Smooth. I don't, I don't know that I necessarily... I, I'm going to try it with some other stuff. Almost maybe, shark, maybe, Chardonnay. Maybe, I know. There's no Chardonnay in this at all. Weird. So, um, it, I, I picked this wine specifically, not only because I had it in my wine rack already, but uh, because of the description, it says, is there a perfect white wine for the fall? Mm, I, this is close. A top contender would be this stunning white blend from France with a perfect blend of floral, stone fruit, and dry honey characteristics, the flavors match so well with roasted butternut squash, turkey with all the trimmings, and watching the leaves change. Stock up for Thanksgiving now. Yeah, honestly, I definitely could see this at Thanksgiving. Mm. This is definitely different than the one we had, the white we had last week. It is very different. Mm -hmm. I, I. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth. Very smooth and, and lemony, but not too lemony. Oh, I just had some cheese. Hold on. I mean, I I could see this as it's a great sipping wine just to have on its own. But I'm guessing it's probably going to be pretty good with a lot of these cheeses. A little, and a little sweeter, a little sweeter than the than the than the, the wine we had last week with cheese. Okay, so let me check the residual sugar on this one and mm -hmm. see if we remember how it, it compares. But excellent. Um, so a little background of the soil to sip report for this wine so you know um, how it was produced and put in this bottle. It says grapes were hand harvested from vines over 30 years old in France. Uh, the, there she goes. Can't figure out where I go. There you go. Uh, Gewürztraminer was fermented slowly in stainless steel tanks for 60 days. 
The Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc were fermented in old 500 liter oak tanks for 30 days. Okay. So it's a mixture of stainless steel mm. and oak. That was one of the things we said about uh, the one of the whites we had last week, the Nest one I believe was also uh, uh, fermented in oak for a little bit. That's what gives it the smoothness. I, I definitely gravitate to those mm -hmm. kind of whites. Anything that was stainless steel could be okay, mm -hmm. but I definitely gravitate more towards the, the oaky, which is funny because is with Chardonnay, the oaky ones are more like the buttery ones, and I tend to gravitate more towards the un -oak Chardonnay. Well, this is excellent. But my other whites, I don't mind the oakiness. No, this, this is great. Um, the wine was then blended and aged in old 500 liter oak tanks for eight months. So again, everything back into the oak tanks, again, for eight months. So that's very interesting. Um, the length of time that it takes to produce this wine. I think the oak tanks definitely smooth it out. If it's just done in, in aluminum or stainless steel tanks, whatever they do, uh -huh. it doesn't give it that that flavor, that with that, that smooth, creamy flavor, yeah, I which agree. I'm getting with this. And even with a variety of cheeses and fruits that I just ate, I'm still getting that smooth, creamy taste, but taste, really tasty white. Chill a little bit, really tasty. I'm, I'm I'm not going to rate it yet, but it's up there. I think this is about like 15 minutes or so out of the refrigerator. Um, so it's still pretty cold. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see cold. if we have it a little bit later on after it's been sitting out. I mean, it's like in the 60s outside right now. So, yeah. it, I mean, not as cold as a refrigerator. It's not going to warm up as quick. No, it's not. So I'm curious to see, though, uh, when it does kind of warm up a little bit, uh, how that affects the mm -hmm. flavors. Um, so I, I was looking at the price just a second ago because I was trying to figure out, you know, some of these wines that take a longer time to produce and they ferment for a long time in the tanks, um, they tend to be a little bit pricier. This wine, though, is $27 a bottle. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. I put I, I my order in tonight so I can get it for Thanksgiving. I know. You, do, you have to, got to start getting, well, I mean, Thanksgiving's a long way away, but right, right. you have plenty of time for that, but I just need to restock in general. I've yes. kind of been like, uh, it's dwindling. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm definitely, I both can go to order. Sure. I'm definitely light on reds right mm -hmm. now. I need definitely need to get some more reds. So, um, so the tasting notes and the notes in this wine are uh, peach, apricot, and honey. I have some honey graham crackers I thought maybe might go well with these. Mm. So I just had some of the uh, the white cheddar cheese. I'm curious to see how that tastes with this. And the pairing notes say it pairs well with um, poultry, uh, roasted vegetables, and fall festivities. So, you know, you take your little like Turbis travel cup or uh, uh, the Yeti travel wine cup, like a, like a adult sippy cup. And you're washing a kid's baby. You know, you're, oh yeah, you're on a hand <laughs> ride or, you know, any of those other kind of like pumpkin picking and apple picking. And, Nobody knows what you're drinking. And that, yes. <laughs> it's coffee. That's right. Yeah. Um, and the ingredients in these in this wine is uh, grapes, yeast, and sulfites. And that's it. That's all there is. Oh, I forgot I, to turn my phone on silent. Sorry. Uh, no. I would, I would absolutely give this a... Uh, Eight and a half. No, I like it with the cheddar cheese. Have you tried with any of the other? I'm gonna try it with the fruit. Cheeses. I, I've tried it with the cheeses. Gonna do some fruits, I'm okay? Now, what I'm are these? Try, are the cherries? Uh, those are strawberries. The smaller okay. ones are cherries. The darker ones are cherries. I'm gonna try a little bit of the honey graham cracker with this because I figured that might go well. I did put some apple chips on here. It didn't say that it has notes of apple, but I figured that you know it's fall. Probably might go with go well with. Uh, Apples, and you know, they you know, say with Thanksgiving, you know, roasted vegetables and turkey, and you always have apple pie at Thanksgiving. Just to get off track, I dreamt last night of you and I were drinking wine, mm -hmm. and we were sitting at the barn at the old house in Syracuse. Really? We were drinking wine. We were sitting in chairs, and we were drinking wine. Maybe it's a premonition. Maybe it is. Hmm. Maybe that's a sign of what's to come later on. Yes, maybe I will uh, own a house up in Syracuse again. Oh, I love it with that graham cracker. I mean, if, if you had the graham cracker with some kind of a tasty wine. dip or... It is very good. I like it. it. It's Like I said, it's a great sipping wine that goes well with a lot of these different cheeses and things. But I'd serve it with your Thanksgiving meal, serve it beforehand. It takes the edge off of her uh, her, her day mm -hmm. when she has her stressful day. Yes. You know, and I talk to her during the day, and she's got problems. You know what I problems. find interesting, though, <laughs> is my classes that I was having a lot of problems with, because the report cards have already come out. Um, and I had a lot more F's this year than I've ever had before. Just from students, just like lack of care to do any of their work despite reminders, emailing parents, everything else. 
it's very frustrating and then the playing around in class and not paying attention and distracting and everything else like that so I think now after the they see that I'm not playing around and you're not going to be given a grade you get the grade that you earned and now I've started with the uh, lunch detentions. Oh, they don't like lunch detentions. I love lunch as detentions. soon as I say like, oh, lunch detention, they're like, what? And I'm like, so what the, what would the, you like are, to make it too? What do they get when they get lunch detention? They have to sit out away from their friends and they can't be on their technology. They just have to sit there by themselves. Perfect. Yes. Perfect punishment. Since these are the kids that love all the attention, if you take the attention take these away, away, if you take these away from these kids, yes. you have to teach them a lesson. So those things are finally starting to, to help making class a little bit more pleasurable. So when my three sons come to my house my three on sons. Halloween, the TV I'm show. A, <laughs> when my boys come to my house to punish them, I will take their, their technology away. No, you, at that point, they're adults. You can't take their technology yeah. away. But what, what you can do is like uh, like turn off the, the Wi-Fi or, or don't give them the password to the Wi-Fi and then also get some kind of like blocker so they can't use their own uh, network. I can, get a, I can get a blocker for the entire inside of my house and the perimeter of my house that just cuts off all internet from every source. <laughs> I push a button. And I might do that during the holidays just to hear kids screaming. Go, doom. Oh, it's, just, it's a habit. Everybody wants to pick up their phone and they want to post pictures. And it's like, can we just, you want to take pictures, that's fine, but can we just wait and enjoy it and then post pictures later? Did you ever notice that on the holidays, like, like it gets to a point, everybody's eating and talking, but then they start flipping through their phones. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts flipping through their phones and nobody's like engaged. I mean, tw two or three times a year you get together with family and you actually have them there. Why can't we just talk? Why can't we institute right, and enjoy a role each other's company. and then say, you know what, how about everybody put their phones and mute them and put them on the counter for Thanksgiving and we just sit around and we talk. Well, see, that was the benefit of back in the day before we had like phones on our cameras. You just had a camera that you took pictures yes, with. Yes. Even like digital cameras, it didn't have to be the one where you had the film, they had to go wait and get developed and everything. You could still see the pictures right away and, and you just like, you know, plug it into your computer and download the pictures and everything. But at least it was like, then you're more involved in taking pictures and capturing the moments and then worrying about sharing it later. Well, yeah, but I'm saying, what if just one day a year you did that? Everybody around the Thanksgiving table, you say, okay, for the next hour, all the phones go up there on the counter and mute them. Mm -hmm. Please, I'm asking. Okay, so back to the wine. Okay. I have to say, I absolutely love the carrot with the whatever this like cheese. You love that cheese. Chives. It's good. It's, Dip, it's garlic parmesan cheese. Is that what it is? Yes. That really goes well with this wine. Oh yeah. I love, I love the creamy cheese. I love, the, try the look I love the sweeter graham cracker. I love the Parmesan chivey cheese and vegetable. I'm doing the apple chip right now, but I just, all of these things I think are fantastic with this wine. It's a great versatile it doesn't, wine. It doesn't alter it. And quite frankly, I would have to say this is a great cold weather wine. Mm -hmm. Cooler weather. It's great. I mean, it's wonderful. You know, obviously the, the red we're going to do is going to be a heavier red, but okay. this is this is. I'm going to say too, the apple chip with this I know apple chips a little bit different, not the same as like apple pie. You do you don't do a graham cracker crust with an apple pie, but I'm just saying, definitely think it goes very nicely with this wine. It all it's like nothing overpowers. Homemade baked apple pie for Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. A warm apple pie. My mom does all the pies. Homemade you know. whipped cream. You know my mom does all the pies. Okay, so a little bit more information about this wine before we move on. Um, it is 13.2% alcohol. It is um, three grams per liter of residual sugar. So that's a little bit higher because most of the Scout and Cellar wines are like a gram or lower. The two wines we're drinking tonight are definitely higher in residual sugar. Yes. Now there's something I was going to share with you guys, uh, just a reminder about what, what we mean when we say residual sugar. I, I, it was actually on one of these wines that was posted on the website. So I'm yeah. going to get to that in a minute. But um, 107 um, calories per five ounce serving and 0 0.444 grams per five ounce serving of carbs. So low in calories and carbs too. Just think of like Thanksgiving, you kind of load up on all the, the foods have a lot of carbs in them. So, you know, why not take a step back? Well, remember what we talked about last week. About Still lots of flavor though. It, tons of flavor, but remember we talked about last week with the mainstream wines? Mm -hmm. They are heavy in carbs. A lot of them have heavy carb counts. And I checked this week, I was looking at a couple, a couple of them. I'm not gonna, well, I'm not gonna mention them, there was one that you, you and I used to drink all the time, uh -huh. has 12 carbs per six ounce serving. One of the wines that we used to drink? Oh gosh. The butter. 
Oh, you like that more than I did. Twelve carbs per glass. Yeah, that kind of gave me a headache. carbs. I couldn't drink very much. And, and the carbs come from the sugar. It comes from the sugar. That's where it comes from. Yeah. So it's like, mm. these wines are like the perfect wines, and they're not diet wine. These are these are great. They, they, they are light in calories. They are light in carbs. Very light in sulfites but too. So if you have a, if you have trouble drinking white wine because they give you a headache. Um, you don't typically find that as much yes. with uh, with these clean craft wines because they, they're lower in sulfites. But the flavor is still pop. Oh out of yeah, the park. lots of flavor. Lots of flavor. Uh, so real fast before we move on, also okay. uh, Sole Ventamie. Uh, it, it, it's French. It means sun, wind, and soul. The elements that come together to make unique wines with distinct characteristics of the environment in which they were cr they were crafted. The way the sun shines in the vineyards, the way the wind blows across the vines, and the way the Sorry, soil benefits from both. So the Sole Ventami, even in the name, they just talk about the, the way that everything is grown and produced over there in, in France is what gives it its unique taste. Sole, sole Ventami. Yeah, Sole Ventami. Sole Ventami. Yes. So, a uh, very uh, interesting wine. We've had lots of, of their uh, other types of wines. They have reds and whites and all the Sole Ventami. We've had other Sole Ventami. Yes, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. We did, um, a couple of weeks ago, we were sampling the, uh, the red blend, their red blend, oh. and then that was the time that our, um, our memory card apparently decided it was full and wasn't going to oh, be. And the so the we recorded a video, whole yes. session, but it really only recorded half. <laughs> right. Well, everything's fully charged and operational. And we got a new so. memory stick, so I don't we, know what was wrong with the old one, but it seems to be recording okay now. Yes, yes, and I'll have everything uploaded tonight, and we're going to be on Rumble, we'll be on YouTube, and uh, again, be, be sure to, to comment. Um, Sophie, the dog. Yeah, she's feeling much better now. But we're not giving her treats. No, we're, I'm trying to break her of that. So we I'm have her, her we have her dog food bowl hidden over here behind the plants. And Joel is throwing her dog food on the ground. She thinks that the snacks that we're eating. And she's actually Nibbling gobbling away it up. At it. Yeah, she gobbling it. it up. Yes. Okay, so if you finish that. Yes, I'm going to try While you're finishing cheese. that, I can talk about what's going on in my life. <laughs> so... I get my, my three my three sons my three sons. Mm -hmm. I get them all together for the first time. I would have to say since Thanksgiving last year. What they were there? Yeah, Thanksgiving Thanksgiving last year, Halloween night in my neighborhood is lunacy. My neighborhood is thousands and thousands of kids. It's bananas. It's absolutely three five gallon pails of candy. A -N -A -N -A but I will sit outside. And I will sit outside with all my sons, and we will pass out candy. And uh, I think they we'll, might take turns going out and, and trick or treating with the grandkids. They might. They might. Yeah. They might. And you said now Rosie is going to be dressed up as what? Some cartoon character I don't even know anymore. I can't remember. Because like, it's been so long since I watched cartoons, I don't know any of these shows anymore. I was on my run today. Somebody created this pathway that said candy or not. Did you see that? No. The pathway. With chopped off hands and limbs and stuff and bloody things. Oh my gosh! And you go through this walkway, and they created all this stuff to get to the front door. Yeah, with tents and stuff. And you get to the front door, and I can't wait to see. And there's lights too. They put lights up. So I'm thinking, the you kid, need to step up your game. You have nothing up front. I have nothing up front, but the thing is, is I'm just going to be sitting there. You know what? You know what I do is my Corvette. All the kids will come up and say, "Is that a Corvette?" And I go. No, I see. I think you it says just, Corvette. You got to keep the garage door closed because you don't want people going over there and like asking you and trying to touch it and take pictures and stuff like that. Like it's just trick or treating. Come get your candy and move on. They do, and I have a, I have a Halloween playlist, and I have I just it's wonderful, and it has lots of. But this year I'm adding some some metal songs to it. Some metal like metal what songs. Is, what does metal have to do with Halloween? Oh, six 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 number of the beast by Iron Maiden. Oh. Come on. Okay. How about uh, dancing, mother? That song's a really bad song. How about uh, uh, Jackal? I don't know half the songs he's talking about because I'm not a metal. There's head. a song called Chainsaw Massacre by Jackal. He uses a chainsaw instead of guitar. He goes. -na 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 he, he actually uses a chainsaw. He uses in the a song. chainsaw in the song. Oh, and I, I saw him in concert, The Lost Horizon in Syracuse, when I was a kid. Anyways. I'm ready to move on now. Okay, so you ready to move on? Yes, please. I'm, I need more wine. She has to. My lipstick keeps getting all over you. Thank you for, for wiping that on my jacket. I, I wipe it on her jacket. Now this is a heavier red. 
Okay, so this yes, we we had this probably about a year ago. I don't know if we've really had it since there. I have to be like in a special mood to drink this wine. It is very, very rich. Yeah, if you look at the color, I'm now show we've had you other the color. Oh, got shocked. You've had uh, we've had other wines yeah, that are this dark good. before, but this is definitely a very like they, they've really classified it as like jammy. That's like the best word you can use to describe it, and it's. It's not like sugary sweet, but because of all of those like jammy oh. fruit flavors, it definitely is like a burst of flavor in your mouth. So. Extreme bold. The reason why I chose this wine for tonight is like I said, it's less than two weeks away from Halloween. I don't know about you guys, but if you are trying to watch your figure and uh, you know, Halloween comes and you find yourself My like, figure. like, oh, one for you, one for me. I'm gonna pass out candy and I'm gonna eat half the bucket myself. Um, if you drink this wine while you're passing out candy, let that be your candy instead. Way less calories, a lot less carbs, and uh, you will thank me for it the next day. I have to keep my girly figure. Hey, I, I'm working on that too, so. Oh, you don't need it. Does she need her girly figure? Well, you can't really tell. Some of the videos, <laughs> I don't know, they say the camera adds 10 pounds, so I'm going to go with that. Suck the gut in. <laughs> I'll just, I'll put Sophie here in front so you can't see. Oh, would you stop it? <laughs> now I'm going to tell okay. you right now, right off the bat, just right off the bat, this is a bold, bold, bold red. When you put your nose in there, okay. each nostril. I mean, they really say like jammy is the best way to describe we this. We discussed this before, mm -hmm. how you, you will sniff from one nostril, the right nostril, and the left nostril, and you'll get a different experience. Mm -hmm. Well, with me, since my mm -hmm. allergies are acting up, it doesn't matter. It, you're kind of getting the same. I, I stick both in there, and we're talking bold. Take a nice deep breath in there. Now I forgot to mention the Soleil Ventimille uh, so white blend. Out. That was 2019. This uh, Middle Jane Zinfandel Velvet, because they, they do have just a regular Zinfandel, uh, but this is the Velvet version. Um, this is the 2021. Um, and this is $31 a bottle. Middle Jane is a little bit uh, more expensive than some of the other uh, vineyards that Scott and Seller uh, <laughs> pairs with. But uh, this is, Middle Jane is one of my favorites. I, I love the story behind it, but I just, I, I love the wines that they produce. The first taste, that's why I'm doing the chocolate, dark chocolate espresso bean. It's outrageous. The first time you taste it, it's outrageous. But it's not like an all night wine. You can't keep drinking this. Yes. This is like one big glass, and that's it. Kind of like a good whiskey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's outrageous. If we're drinking this room temperature, now I get oh. room temperature out here is in the 60s. That's outrageous with the, with the coffee espresso beans, the, the chocolate. It's got like really bold, like very jammy, fruity yeah, no, flavors to it. Very good for you. But it's not like sugary sweet. I, like, there's lots of like store-bought like like cheap wines mm. that just taste like sugar. Mm. And that's definitely mm. not what this wine is. Are we doing this the wine wine? We can. What's the climax of the wine wine? I, I, haven't, I haven't made my list yet. I, we were trying some of these out to try to figure out uh, maybe some options that we could we, do we in the next to, wine party. We gotta party. talk about that. We're I know. We're gonna yeah. have a meeting. Yes, Late, later on after the video. Okay, we'll have a meeting Yes, our, our, our corporate meeting. Um, this is 100% Zinfandel, and this is from Sonoma County, California. Um, jammy, like we said. That's how we would describe this limited special edition release of Middle Jane Zinfandel. Sourced from one of our top Zinfandel sites, this is a wine that has the plush, lush flavors of a Zin, new to Scout and Cellar. The wine fermentation stops naturally, leaving more natural residual sugars to add a juicy sweetness to the final taste. Jammy, silky, strawberry, chocolate, and cherry burst through the glass for a Zin of fans of Paso Robles and a bold, fruitier red blend. Let me just tell all you women out there, when you eat dark chocolate espresso beans <laughs> or dark chocolate with this wine, you need nothing else. Yeah. The middle of the work week, wine down Wednesday. Open a bottle of Hard working woman. Oh yeah. Come on ladies, yeah. I'm telling you, you did, this is very I mean, orgasmic. Like, you, you listen to the description, who doesn't like silky strawberry, chocolate, and cherry bursts? Well, let me tell you, the dark chocolate totally enhances it. If you drink it alone, it's fine. When you, when you try the dark chocolate, especially with the espresso bean, sends it through the roof. I don't want to eat anything else. Honestly, I mean, I'm going to try the cherries with it, but it's like, 
dark chocolate. I mean, that's what women women crave dark chocolate and women, yes. don't you? Yes. That that's that's that's. And it's full of lots of antioxidants, which are good for you too. Oh, so yeah. don't feel guilty. Mmm. No. Can you... I have some dried strawberry here. So this time of year, you know, apples are great, but like some of the other fruits, some of the berries, like it's kind of becoming like out of season. It's harder to find, or what you can find are not that great. So if, you... if you go to the dried fruits, you can and and get a lot of the same great flavors, but. Um, we might go up to we might, we, we might go up to New York to watch the Notre Dame game. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to do some more research. But if we do go, I'm sure we'll go to some apple picking. We'll go to some apple festivals. That would be nice. We'll go to the wine country. Because we don't have that you're, down here. You're a wine snob now, so you're not going to want to go to the wine yeah, country. Yeah, I know. Now that I've, I've been drinking the clean, crafted wines. Well, you, we can, you can, we can. Well, you can't bring it with you on the plane. No. We could order some and have, have it shipped have to the hotel. Drop shipped to the hotel. We get us a case of wine there. <laughs> we go to the front desk. We're like, I think we need to have a package. They're this like, is yours? no, no. They're going to be like, no, we don't know what you're talking about. And they'll be back there like sipping on the wine. Get back there going like that. Hey, <laughs> don't drink our wine. <laughs> So, um, the soil to sip report for this one. Um, these grapes were hand harvested from Peter Haywood's Los uh, Chamizal Vineyards. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Chamizal? No, C H A M I Z A L. Chamizal. Yes, I know what that is. That's not what I said. <laughs> um, in Sonoma Camp, County, California, sourced from Zinfandel vines ranging up to 20 years old. Uh, the wine was fermented for 20 days in closed top stainless steel fermenters and then aged four months in stainless steel tanks before bottling. So no oak in this one. But it's funny because it does have a little bit more of a, of, I would almost say like that oaky kind of taste to it because of the, the like boldness to it. You know, now that I, this is the second video we've done of this one, now that I have it, I just had some, uh, some cherries, some freeze-dried freeze cherries, and it cuts the sweetness. The cherries cut the sweetness. The strawberries play off nicely of the jammy flavor, but right, it doesn't add to the sweetness. It just, it, it's still, it's a, a perfect compliment. I'm trying to decide whether I would like this with bolognese or would you like it with filet mignon? I or, definitely would not do this with Italian. You wouldn't do bolognese? No, not any kind of Italian. Not garlic sauce, marinara? Well, okay, so you mentioned that. It says it pairs well with Asian and barbecue. So you think with a sweet barbecue sauce, you know, I definitely I can see that. I'm gonna try to convert you to be more of a spicy barbecue girl. Well, okay. What about like Asian though? If you do like sweet and sour, or you do like a a, a general Asian chicken sauce. or general so's chicken. Uh huh. Whenever we order Chinese food, I a always little sweet get, and I, get spicy? The, I get the spicy pack. I mean, that would be perfect with that. Oh, cool. I think we might be ordering some Chinese later. No, you can't do that. I'm gaining weight. We have a PF change to go right down the street. No. Just <laughs> order it. Go pick it up. No, I can't do that. I'm fighting my weight right now. I'm fighting it. This is definitely not the right time of year to be doing that. No, but Thanksgiving's my, my big cheat. That's the big cheat. Mm -hmm. I cheat on everybody out there. Yes. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Trust me. And Now, okay, I had the smoked um, Greer yeah. cheese. Um, I noticed it almost makes this wine give me like um, a little bit of uh, like a dryness effect on my tongue. The smoked the, the Greer? Smoke, yeah. It gives me like a little bit like drier. Drink the wine right after it. It gives me like a drier taste on my palate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice. It, it tastes really it good. It cuts the smokiness. The cherries cut the sweetness. Okay. You gotta try the chocolate. You have to try the chocolate. I will do that. And I also wanna try the, the graham crackers with this too. It doesn't have notes of graham cracker in it, but it's just mostly notes of strawberry and cherry because that's how you, you do like these the espresso jam. beans are gonna be up all night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up but, all night. <laughs> for the ingredients. <laughs> Not for me, I have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> the ingredients are grapes, tartaric acid, yeast, malolactic bacteria, and sulfites. This is 13.9% alcohol. And um, here's the shocker. 22 grams per liter of residual sugar. So that's heavy. That's really high. So if I hit but, Powerball tonight, we're gonna go buy that ranch in Montana. But yeah. <laughs> but listen, even with that much, that um, level of residual sugar, Still only 124 ca <clears throat> excuse me, calories per five ounce serving. Carbs. Pretty comparable to the, the other wines that we're drinking with much lower residual sugar. 3.25 grams per five ounce serving. Isn't that insane? For carbs. Honestly, no, we're doing little pours here. Mm -hmm. If you equal it all out, it's probably a full glass. By the end of the night, it's a full, like a full glass, which these are what, six ounce glasses so, probably? Well, 
No, I think it's more than that, but um, yeah, these are based off of five ounce pours. So, I, I, you know, I was saying before, this is still better than eating candy after candy after candy while you're passing out for trick or treaters. Oh, I saw the big bag of uh, Nestle Crunch, Baby Ruth, and oh, uh, and butter. I know they're really pushing it at the grocery store. It's so much more expensive this year, though. Holy cow! No. Instead of passing out like a little handful to each kid, it's literally going to be here's one for you, one for you, one for you. Have can, a nice. Can night. you imagine Andrew eating all that candy? He's going to be out of control. Oh yeah. He's going to be ah. I'm sure they will. Uh, they will uh, monitor and censor the amount that he is allowed well, to. Well, Rosie's going to be out of control. But they're really going to have to keep control over that and just, like, take her bucket should away. I spoil her? And I'm like, no, you should not. Well, Nate, Nate and Gavin will. Oh, my gosh. She's got to, I remember last year, she, like, started opening up stuff, and, and, and Chris and Megan were both like, we told you no more. Well, because they get that sugar high. Yes, I know. They just can't help themselves. Okay, so the, uh, I had the, uh, the espresso chocolate covered bean, right. with, and I had the, the wine before. Yeah, it definitely it, it, it pairs very nicely together. I tried some of the different cheeses. It just it it, it goes well. The Locatelli it, is it the saltiest. It doesn't really like compete with the wine. It just kind of enhances it well, a little bit. The Locatelli Romano, sheep's milk Romano from Italy, is the saltiest cheese on earth. This, they literally wall this up, and it sits it it sits hanging in a room for hanging in a room for months and months. But when you eat a salty, salty cheese like this and drink the wine, it enhances the flavors. It enhances the flavors of the cheese and the wine at the same time. So a very, very salty cheese, Locatelli Romano. Go find it, to ask for it at the store. Locatelli Romano, you can buy it in bricks, or you can buy it grated for sauce. If you buy it in bricks, you can eat it like this. In little chunks. A little chunk. So I just had some of the caramelized onion jack cheese. I'm gonna try that with the wine. Boar's head, by the way. We should get paid by the boar's head. I know, they should at least like throw us some free cheese or something. Oh my god. My goodness. Boar's head is the, the best on earth, literally. Best cheese, best deli meat. So, okay, here's what I wanted to tell you about um, about the residual sugars. I, I saw this and I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want to talk about. So it says, grape juice from wine grapes is naturally high in sugar. When yeast is introduced, they turn those sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide in the process called fermentation. When that fermentation is halted, the yeast had stopped converting the sugars to alcohol and residual sugars are left over. So that's what residual sugars are. It's just part of the natural process of making wine. They never add added sugar no. to these wines. It's all just the natural sugars from the grape and the fermentation process. And I think a lot of the commercial wines they add wine, they were sugar. They, they do. add sugar to it. They do. And a lot of other really nasty things you don't want to know. Agave and different and high fructose corn syrup. I think I think they do add you know, all that I, stuff. I wasn't even talking about just other like sweetening elements. I was talking about all the other stuff they right, put in there. Garbage. Yeah, it's not good. Um, so with this unique wine, the fermentation stopped with more residual sugars than normal. As our goal with every wine is to produce it as naturally as possible without yep. manipulating the wine, we kept the wine as is and ta-da, Velvet was born. And, and, and the greatest thing about it is, you know, I hate to be a wine snob, I really do hate to say you that. You don't hate to be a wine snob, I, you love it. I, I never ever dreamt I would become a wine snob because I'm a beer guy. I'm a Mil I'm Miller Lite. I love Miller Lite. Okay, I love fast cars. I love Miller Lite. I love heavy metal, but I'm also a wine snob. I really am a wine and cheese snob. And not, not, you ask her, it's, it's got to be expensive cheeses. I don't buy the cheap cheese. No. We go we, we go to the gourmet section. We got to get the gourmet cheeses, and she's like, okay, we don't even go over and look at the other stuff. We go over here. This is what we do. And I'm going to tell we you. We have our favorites. You know, if you watch our videos, we kind of have the same the, things that we, we use We have the time. Gore's Head Caramelized Onion, okay, which you can get, which a lot of state, well, up north, you have to go to Nichols, in, in, in Syracuse, you have to go to Nichols Market to get anything Boar's Head. Really? Um, oh, yeah, there, there's no plate. Wegmans doesn't carry Boar's Head. They have their own brand. Seriously? I thought we they did. Wegmans has their own brand. Wegmans owns the market. They own the market. They And they probably pay Boar's Head to use their meats and stuff. Because their turkey tastes just like oven gold. Yeah. This is Wegmans, uh, Wegmans turkey. I, I don't know how they do it. Wegmans is pretty good. Wegmans has the best bagels, don't they? 
the best bagels you've ever had. Yes, but they have a very short uh, shelf life. You have to eat them pretty quickly. They're fat, warm bagels with like onions and garlic on them. Mm -hmm. we, I made big, giant sandwiches, and she loved it. Egg sandwiches, eggs. Cream cracker with this wine, excellent. Should Plays I try? off nicely Should between I try? those two. I'm trying to figure out, like, oh my gosh, you know I love my Pinterest. Are we going grocery shopping? And I have, I have to pick up a couple of things. Yes, okay. um, I, I have a recipe for a. Um, oh, back to my key lime pie. Uh, last week we did the the burners. You heard about the key lime pie? Where no, is it? I know. The, but the um, I have a recipe for a key lime pie dip, and you oh. use the graham crackers to dip into you there. Make your mom would like that. that would have gone great really, with, with that before, but it, I'm just thinking of things that I could do with graham cracker. Do you know what you could do like a? Um, have you ever had like a chocolate silk pie? Mm -hmm. So they use a graham cracker crust. Mm -hmm. You could do like a, um, a like a chocolate pie filling dip. Yeah. That you could uh, use the graham crackers that would really go great with. Do you think your mom would like lemon, lemon meringue, huh? Uh-huh. Does she like it? Yeah. What if I had a custom baked... She loves lemon stuff, but she actually, she likes lime a um, little bit better. What if for her birthday I got her a lemon cake with white frosting? Would she like that? Um... Like a lemon cake? Like, wouldn't it be great? Mm, she'd probably be mad at you because then... Why? Because then it's going to make her fat. <sighs> Okay, she so... She would like it, but it's like you have to have it in, like, smaller, controlled portions. Your parents love bolognese night. Yes, they do. They do love bolognese they night. They love homemade pasta night. Oh, that's a great night. That's a great night. What, what wine did we do with the bolognese? We had the, uh, K Fico. We had the K oh, that's right, the K Fico. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. We had bottles of the K Fico. And Italian wine, of course. Oh, it was unbelievable. Of course, it goes perfectly with Italian you should, food. You should do pop-up videos. We're not doing those anymore. We're too busy, like, eating that we can't stop to make a video about it. so good. So, what I said before, I really, I love the, the brand, Middle Jane. I, I love the story behind it. The wines are excellent. They are a little bit more expensive, but, um, so I was just going to share real fast about Middle Jane, how it got its name. Um, so it says, four generations ago, there was the first Jane in our family. Jane was strong. She swore only when needed. She worked hard. She did things right, and she wore lipstick. The unofficial matriarch of our family, Jane, was the matriarch we all aspire to become. Ever since, we've given each girl in our family the same middle name, Jane. Jane's addiction. No, not that Jane. <laughs> it's a constant reminder to do things right, to be more like Jane. Today, we craft clean wine under a similar name, Middle Jane. So the middle name, Jane. Uh, we do this because everything our wine represents just so happens to be everything she represented. Honesty, passion, and a commitment to doing things with integrity. That's how Jane would have done it. This is this is a perfect night for a wine. If we have the wine party tonight. Oh, it would absolutely perfect, be perfect. perfect. The it's weather beautiful. is gorgeous. We don't have to have the heater on. We have a special heater here. Mm -hmm. um, but it is absolutely spectacular weather in here in mm -hmm. Central Florida tonight. Um, I don't know where you are, but if you are, if you'd like to comment about the weather. We were looking at, I was looking at a property in northern Montana on a lake today, and so the average median summer temperature is 82.2, and the average median winter is 19.9. That's too cold for me. Well, she, she'd go up there with me snowmobile. Get a snowmobile could, suit on her. I could do that for a couple of days. Would you be a snow bunny? It would get old really quick. Go snowmobile. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll do all you do is pull the trigger like a jet ski. Okay, I said for a couple of days, and then like, and then I'm over it. It's too cold. And then we'll go shoot bear and elk. Then I'll just sit inside in the fire by the fireplace. You always have. You always read a book and drink my glass of wine, and you go out and do all those outside things. I'll I'll I'll, I'll shoot. I'll kill an elk, and I'll, I'll butcher it, and we'll have elk steak. Okay, I've never had that before, but Ooh, I trust good. that you can cook it in a way Moose that will better. not taste so gamey. Moose is better. Okay. Moose is really good. Okay. Yeah, moose meat's really good. I've had everything. I've had venison, I've had moose, I've had elk. Elk is a little gamey. It's a little gamey. Yeah. Um, but I, I find venison even a little I, bit gamey. I made her orange roughy the other night. Yeah, that Some was delicious. That was yeah. We had a wine with it. I forgot. I never used to really like fish growing up. I just like that fishy there was taste. No but fishy there's no fishy taste to it. Was no, it? there's a lot of fish now that you've made for me that don't have that fishy Zero taste. Zero fishy taste. White and flaky, absolutely delicious, and look like, definitely like pretty healthy for you. So. And I, I told you straight up right now with orange roughy, you have to deep fry. You can't you can broil it. You can't you can't grill it because it falls apart. It's so flaky it falls apart. So you have to bread it with with rinse it with egg wash. 
bread it and deep fry it three minutes aside, boom, we're done. Her kids would absolutely go nuts. If you didn't tell if them If you could fish, actually get them to eat it. They would go nuts because it doesn't taste like fish. They turn their noses up at anything. Orange so Ruffy is absolutely outrageous good fish. Isn't it? Wasn't that great? Yeah, it was very good. That's like largemouth bass. That's what it tastes like. Okay. I'd, I'd try it then. So you'd eat the bass that I catch? Yeah. Deep yeah, I would. Oh, yeah. So... Now that we've shared all of our, our yes. little stories and these two wines with you, uh, let us know if you have any questions or if you see anything else on the Scout and Cellar site that you would like our opinion on. We could do yes. a little a video on. Um, but um, yeah, have a have a great week. Please, please like, please like and subscribe to the channels, the Rumble channel, the Facebook page. Then you get a notification every time we post a new video. You get a video. notification, <laughs> and you know what? I want to thank the people that have been commenting. She, we both have been. She primarily responds, but I want to thank all of you, people who have made comments and gone back and forth with us, and we've had conversations and stuff. Thank you. Because you've had some conversations with people, right? Mostly on, on our wine page on Facebook. On Facebook, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you straight up right now, if you are a regular on our Facebook page and you happen to be in the Central Florida area, we are planning a wine party right here in the wine garden coming up in the next few weeks. So if you happen to be yeah. here... We, we have uh, a, a we're, we're working on our uh, our playlist of, of wines that we're going to be sharing with you yes. guys. But I guarantee you, every wine that we share with you, you're uh, you're going to be excited to try. It. And there's going to be a lot of people here that think like you. They're they're, they're whinies. Whinies? like no. foodies, like foodies. You have foodies. I, whinies. No, I've never I've never heard them. Classic you connoisseurs. Mean, you heard foodies, right? I've heard foodies, but I know I don't think they. What call does foodie whinies. mean? Does it mean I like food? You like to try new foods. Okay, well, no, 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 this is, okay, what kind of food, though? All kinds of foods. Okay, so am I a foodie, or am I a whiny? Am I a whiny? She's like, you're whiny. <laughs> <laughs> you're whiny, S-O-B-U. No, we, we're, we're, we're adventurous when it comes to, to food, and then we have, like, different foods that we like, and we just try them with different wines to see how they affect the taste of the wine. I don't know that we're, we're not really foodies. We're not foodies. No. We have our specific foods that we like. Yes. Trust me, filet mignon is one of them. <laughs> yes. And we drink different reds with filet mignon to just give to enhance it. Yes. And uh, but uh, anyways, so, you know all what? right. Well, you guys have a have a great week, and uh, we hope to see you back again next week for another Wine Down Wednesday. Yeah, and I'm just gonna do. There's one last thing I want to say. On Saturday, go Q's for playing Clemson. Go Q's six and zero. Let's go seven and zero, baby. Come well, on. Well, and the Gators can't lose because they don't play. The Gators are going to be 1-0 and this week because they can't play. Oh, my gosh. But anyways, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Please, again, like, subscribe, make comments, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.